Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am at my read desk, largely because we're going to be talking a bit about read making today. Now, I recently started reading my reads. I say recently because I've been making reads for so many years, and it's just within the past year, especially as Raff Reads, my boutique read business has taken off, that I've realized that the reads that I'm making for bassoonists across the world that play on different systems, they need a read that fits the aperture and the end of the vocal. The aperture and the end of the vocals is not universal, and I think that this really was driven home to me when I filmed the video about cleaning a bassoon vocal, which I will link in case you haven't seen it. In that video, I mentioned that my heckle vocal, I was concerned about trying to use the cobalt bassoon brush because I was fearful that it would get stuck in the end of the vocal and I didn't want to risk any repair on it because it's such a great vocal. And I realized that as so many of you were commenting that you didn't understand my fear, there is such a difference in bassoon vocals and the aperture end opening. The diameter is not universal. Because I'm making reads for you guys and so many of you play on various setups, I've realized that I need to start reaming the reads so that they fit and they match to what it is that you are playing. Since I started reaming reads, I have noticed that it does raise the pitch ever so slightly. Now this is a very logical side effect because the overall read has been shortened. Now it's only been shortened about four millimeters, but that four millimeters does raise the pitch. I found that this also helps with the stabilization of notes such as E and C sharp, which are both very flexible when you first scrape down the tip of a reed. Because the reed is ever so slightly shorter, it does help that stabilization and those notes are less likely to fall flat when first scraping down a reed. So let's go ahead and dig into how I ream a reed because I am quite particular about it because it is adding a variable into the read and anytime you are shifting anything ever so slightly, consistency is key. That way you know if it's the cane that's reacting differently or if it's something that you're doing that is different. What I have here are some reeds that are already drying and when I form the reeds, I do use a Rieger mandrel. I don't use a Rieger forming mandrel, but just actually a Rieger mandrel. Now, when I ream the reeds, I do match it with a Rieger reamer. I think it's important to make sure that you are matching a mandrel to the type of reamer that works best for you. Largely because you want to make sure that you're not accidentally reaming from here to here. And sometimes the reamers can go in too far into the reed and you end up reaming between that first and second wire. And all I want to do is make sure that I have this reed that will go down to that original line that is on the reamer mandrel. I do have to say that if you have an older Rieger mandrel from about 20 years ago, that the line may be in a different place. Now, when I formed the reed, I did go ahead and make sure that it went all the way down to that line. But after I have formed the reed, I go ahead and I wrap the reed with the FF nylon thread and the Dugo cement. The amount of tension that is put on the reed with the nylon thread as well as the amount of duco cement you use can definitely shrink how far that reed then fits onto the mandrel. When I first actually do wrap the reed, it will still go down to that line, but after the first time I soak it and clip the tip, I let it completely dry out and that's when the shrinking of the tube actually happens. Now I find this is helpful because it will help put a good seal on the reed so the end of the tube doesn't leak, which is in a way a good thing, but it does mean that for those of you that are playing on a different style of vocal that it no longer actually goes down to that line. So in order to compensate for that, that's where I use the Rieger reamer. What I do is I go ahead and I insert the clean reamer. I make sure that I always start with a Rieger reamer clean and when the reed is dry, largely because if it is wet, it's going to dull the blades of the reamer. And I also have noted that if there's extra um, old cane that is left in there that I will get inconsistent results. So I will go ahead and put the reed on there and then I do little third turns, largely because I can't do a full turn and get an even amount of pressure on the inside of the reed. What I will do is 15 little turns and the 15 little turns are exactly what it takes for me to get back down to that line on the mandrel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then I go ahead and I remove the mandrel and you can see that there are little bits of cane inside the reeds. So I go ahead and shake that out. I also blow through the end 
to make sure that they are okay. There might be some little hangy down threads. This time there isn't, but if there is, I'll go in with a rat tail file and go ahead and clear those out so that it's clean on the inside. Then I double check that it fits down to the line on the mandrel and voila, it does. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to click that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye.